Welcome to Author's Note. The Bank of England's quarterly inflation report was published on Wednesday and it made for gloomy reading indeed. Here in Author's Note we're going to discuss the details of the inflation report with Chris Giles, the FT's economics editor. Chris, when we had a growth spurt in the summer, 1% growth in the third quarter, Prime Minister David Cameron said the good news will just keep on coming. But if the Bank of England is right, he's going to have to eat his words, won't he? He is. It's less than a month after he said that. And the Bank of England's forecasts are, as you can see here in the purple line, the gloomiest we've seen for a long time. This shows the level of output. It's not the growth rate, it's the level. So right. we see the upswing before the crisis, then the big recession, the peak, the recession. and then and then what the Bank of England thinks the future will look like. We are here. These are its past forecasts. So every time, every year, it's got more and more gloomy. About so here we'll reach, we'll reach the level we had before the crisis by about 2014. Yes. And that's later than any of the other forecasts. We always thought we'd get, if that's the level, we always thought we'd get there in 2010, 11, 12, 13, 14. Now it's the end of 2014. So if this is right, the, the summer growth was just a blip. Yes, the Bank of England is very clear about that. Mm -hmm. We had Olympic ticket sales and we had some other spending associated with Olympic, plus a boost back from the Jubilee, which depressed yeah. growth in the previous quarter. So once you take all that out, it looks as if the fourth quarter might well be negative again. Negative again. But that's Triple dip. Well, not really, because that's not right either. So the underlying growth is about 0.2, 0.3, the bank says which is slow, let's face it, about 1% a year. And what about inflation? Well, inflation, unfortunately for the bank, is higher again than it previously thought. So its inflation forecasts have been raised again in the short term, but not they haven't come down further in the medium term. So this weakness that they're predicting, it's saying, isn't going to lead to low inflation. So there is no case, really, for greater stimulus. Now, than that this is a bit embarrassing for the Bank of England, isn't it? Because uh, not only have they got these forecasts wrong every time and had to adjust down or up in the case of inflation, uh, but the whole premise of the government's policy was tight fiscal policy, monetary expansion to drive demand. So why didn't that work? Well, what the bank are now saying is there's other things, basically foreigners, so things happening abroad which are really bad for the economy. We can't do anything about that. We can't do anything about that. But also, domestically, they're increasingly concerned that the supply capacity, what the economy can produce, has actually been seriously damaged, not by the recession, but also the structure of the economy is very weak and might be being kept weak, but sort of on life support by very low interest rates, by the precise policy of the Bank of England. So we have a chart here about, uh, the next chart is about what's happening in the private sector, perhaps due to low interest rates. Could you explain this for us? Yes, if you look at the blue line, it's a long yeah. chart. If you look at the last recession, we saw a huge increase in the blue line. What in is this? Liquidations. Liquidations of companies. Companies going mm. bust. Yeah. What have we seen this time in this recession? Very little. Right. Company liquidations very low. Why, well, isn't and that a good thing? That is a good thing. But if we look at the red line, the red line is the proportion of companies that are making losses. These are all companies, not just big companies, small companies reporting losses to companies' house. Look, that's now higher than it was in the last recession. So we have lots and lots of loss-making companies or companies in trouble, but they're not going bust because they, we don't have high interest rates. We don't have the obvious things that force companies out of business. So we might have these rather difficult companies which aren't really doing very much, aren't producing much, aren't growing, but are struggling on staying in business. So in order to get growth, the, implica the implication is uh, we would need some of those companies to go out of business to be replaced. The term here, I guess, is creative destruction yeah. by faster growing companies. And that's not happening. So we're not getting the destruction and then we're not getting the creation which creates the growth. And that's the worry the Bank of England has, which is one of the reasons it's pulled down its growth forecast into the medium term and now says there's, there's a chance that growth will be persistently low. So this means, I suppose, that policymakers have very no good choices. There's not much anyone can do either on the monetary or the fiscal side if this is right. If this is right, it says that you can't just boost up mm. demand and then you will get growth and there won't be any inflation because the economy can't wear it. So if this is right, then we're in a rather bad world. And this is the really gloomy bit of it, that even if you pumped up demand, all you'd get would be inflation. That means, if this is right, no good choices for policymakers, lots of policy dilemmas, and no doubt a lot of uncertainty for investors still going on, which means probably a lot more author's notes about these topics. Thank you very much for watching.